This month, the, the, as far as when this video is going up, September, is the last month that Netflix will be mailing out DVDs. So, I feel it is appropriate to take a moment to eulogize Netflix's DVD rental program and the red envelopes that they have been mailing discs in. There is a legitimate criticism to be made that Netflix did dirty by the local video store. And it's not entirely wrong, but it's not entirely right either. I'll explain. Uh, so when I was younger, um, we had a local video, independent video store in my town. And it ultimately closed and was replaced, as was happened in lots of other places, by first a Hollywood video and then later also a Hollywood video and a Blockbuster. With ultimately Hollywood going out of business and Blockbuster not that far afterwards. And now I will admit that the video that I don't recall what the, how the video selection was at my local rental store very well because we, my family didn't rent VHS tapes much. Um, we were worried about, well, part, part of its cost, part of its worrying about um, whether they dirty the heads and that's their thing on the VCR. Um, the heads being the magnetic heads that would read the data off of the uh, magnetic tape that was used in VHS tapes because this video store closed well before DVD and other optical media came into being. I'm not going to condescend and then try and try and explain to you what a VHS tape is. I respect your intelligence enough not to do that. If you do not know what a VHS tape is, I trust you enough to look it up yourself. In any case, by the time I started renting movies myself, um, my option was Hollywood video that eventually we got a blockbuster in addition to the Hollywood and the Hollywood finally shut down, shut down just the blockbuster. And when I subscribed to my, um, subscribed to the Netflix DVD plan, which I should mention is back in 2006. So like not quite like super OG Netflix, because Netflix, according to the thing, was doing DVD rentals for 25 years. And just to do the math real quick, that'd be 1998. And I wasn't rent and I didn't get an on disc plan until basically until yeah, until I was in college. Um, I was aware of Netflix, but I hadn't gotten uh, the on disc plan until then. Partially because I didn't have a steady source of income to do that. So in any case, um, with the um, uh, with, with, with what Netflix got me that the local video stores didn't is it got me a much wider selection of material. Um, like I found about the Criterion Collection and Janus Films were because my library stocked them and stocked a very limited selection of them. But I saw the movies there, but not a lot of them. Like you have some big Mar Bergman, that sort of thing. Uh, but if I wanted anything beyond that, I'd have to go to Netflix to get the disc collection. Indeed, a lot of the movies that I have reviewed on this channel, I have gotten via Netflix uh, on disc because they weren't necessarily easily available otherwise. Now, we do have an excellent video rental store in the Portland area, Movie Madness, but that's also a rather substantial drive to get out there depending on where you are in the area. So it's not available to everyone. Unfortunately, uh, or not conveniently accessible. I so Netflix opened that option, and so if you so gave you access to parts of world cinema, documentary film, um, obscure action and horror films, um, classic movies that certainly your local blockbuster or Hollywood video would never carry because it's much more 
financially viable to have just churn through the latest new releases plus a few newer titles that aren't that aren't as great but that but still will fill up some shelf space and have then a very limited back catalog on top of that it makes more money to churn through movies that way rather than sit than um having a big back catalog of you know the complete filmography of Clint Eastwood um all of the a lot all of the spaghetti westerns of Sergio Leone that sort of thing so this opened a tremendous world to me and certainly numerous other cinephiles where we could go to Netflix and find Marshall, all these sorts of movies that we'd read about in film guides from various authors like Sex and Zen and the Bolt in the Head or um, Mad um, Stray Dog of Cinema, the, the films of um, Mamoru Oshii, or all sorts of other similar authors um, covering classics of horror and martial arts movies and crime films and noir and giallo and all of this other stuff that are these considered more obscure niche, niche genres which aren't considered necessarily in the same light as the big budget films the, the sort of exploitation movies that when quentin tarantino was working at a video store early in his career he would be recommending we could go get those and we could go see those and we could see the things that tarantino and Robert Rodriguez and all these other directors were riffing on. And it created a, again, it, it opened up a whole new level of understanding of cinema and of the filmmakers whose work we appreciate and enjoy. Chance to see all these Ozploitation films like Turkey Shoot, um, that directors like, um, but like that would like will lead to like the Mad Max movies and that sort of stuff, or Canadian exploitation films like uh, My Bloody Valentine that come out of that country's relative their 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 form of uh, low budget no budget horror cinema, all that sort of fun stuff. It was great. In that, in fact, indeed, probably. One of the great minuses of the balkanization is the wrong term, but the factionalization of the streaming media landscape these days is because you'll have the, you have these companies like Warner and Paramount and Disney and all that stuff yanking their their material behind their individual streaming services and then pulling stuff down from that for um, to for tax reasons, like what happened with the Willow live action series, like what happened with, uh, with, with various, with a variety of animated works on the Warner service is it cuts those works off from people and where like the advantage of having this massive selection through Netflix on physical disc is if a work goes unavailable, it's because it's out of print and they can't replace it. If the disc is damaged in shipping or somebody or is damaged by a person who rented it, the, the usual, the usual things that, that rental stores deal with, with the addition of shipping issues. And like that's the situation, cir circumstances there. Um, and that's not the situation where, like, if Warner decides to take a movie out of print and stop putting out the disc, if Universal, if Paramount, if Disney decides we're going to stick this in the vault, the physical discs are still out there. And 
So people like me can still go out and discover, oh, hey, Netflix has Bury Me High in stock. And that's a movie that I found out about by researching stuff related to the Feng Shui tabletop role-playing game. So I'm going to rent that and watch it and discover that this movie is amazing. And at which point I then go and do a video telling you all about it. Same with Heaven and Hell. Same with um, other similar, more obscure Wuxia and Shaw Brothers films. So I am bummed that Net that when Netflix decided to shut down the service, when Redbox said, hey, we'll buy this off you, I am bummed that Netflix said no. Even if I don't think that Redbox necessarily could maintain the same level of service, I think from not just a film preservation, but from a film enthusiast standpoint, having services like Netflix are still good. I, for like as an on-disc service. And I'm lucky that Portland has the Portland area has movie madness and has a variety of independent theaters like the Hollywood theater um, where I can go see obscure films or I can see cla like obscure classic Hong Kong martial arts films from the Shaw brothers, or I can go, or they're going to put on a, they put on a screening of uh Castle Hero Ultimate's Memories, or stuff like that. And I have an opportunity to seek out these works. In fact, honestly, my, with my current employment putting me in Portland more often, if you've seen my social media, um, this gives me, a, like, I may take advantage of this for opportunities to go, okay, maybe on my way home from work on a weekend, I, if there's a movie I'm looking for and my local libraries don't have it, I will go seek out Movie Madness and see if they have the movie I seek. That sort of thing. So, I get going to take advantage of this opportunity to let you provide a soapbox for you as well to eulogize and give your thoughts of if you rented DVDs from Netflix back in the day. What what rare, interesting, and obscure finds did you get in the red envelope in the mail? What documentaries? What concert films? What wrestling or MMA DVDs did you get? What was your first Netflix disc? For me, pop up into my uh, history real quick. Find my first. I am tempted... I had to like, spend a little extra for my last, for last few months to get a few more discs, to squeeze a few more movies here. So, my first rental was, um, first rentals were the, uh, were Star Trek 2 and 5. Um, specifically the DVD special edition releases with the bonus material. Um, I don't know if you've seen the background, but I night later got the 4K and Blu-ray versions of the of those movies. And then after that, bunch of MST3K, um, in particular Space Mutiny, Wild World of Batwoman, and The Killer Shrews. Because we put our faith in Blast Hard Cheese. And finally, after the Mystery 3K, the first, the first movie where I actually went and dug into something really different and more obscure is my first Hammer horror film, um, the 1968 Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. I just see if I can get a hold of that, maybe to review of that at some point, because that is... That's an interesting place for me to have jumped on board in the middle of Hammer Horror. Is yeah, I'm going to jump in on that one. So I might actually give that a revisit. So, 
How about yourselves? What were your first uh, Netflix discs? What what films did you discover and, and genres and various subcategories of movies did you discover um, by renting movies on Netflix? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.